Katerina, great to have you on the show. You're joining us from the States. Of course, the Athletic World Championships is in Eugene in Oregon this coming July. And we hope you're training hard and you're feeling good before those. We wish you all the very best in success. Before we get onto the financial side, just tell us a little bit about how you're feeling before those championships. I know a lot of your fans will be interested. Yeah, I'm feeling good. This summer isn't just about the World Championships for me. It's a very jam-packed schedule for all um, Team GB athletes or British athletes because of COVID. Many champs have been pushed back, so we've actually got World Champs Commonwealth Games, which are in Birmingham, which are home games, and European um, Championships in Munich as well. So, yeah, it's a lot to... <laughs> a busy summer for, for athletics fans. Well, I'll be following those, as I'm sure will many GB News listeners and viewers. Fingers and toes crossed for your chances and for <laughs> all British athletes at those championships. Now, as we were reporting in the news earlier, Katerina, the Nationwide, the Building Society, is reporting that deposits are the biggest hurdle for those looking to purchase their own properties. And they're reporting that... Three quarters of first time buyers save the deposits themselves, but a quarter are relying now on the bank of mum and dad, a proportion that's going up all the time. How frustrating is it for you? You are a world class athlete. You have global fame. You've worked hard all your life since you were born in Liverpool. And even you, a, a, an icon of sport, can't buy a house. How does that feel? Um, I, I had struggled buying my first home um, a couple of years ago, for sure. It was, it was. I think it, the illusion of track and field is it, to some you say all those stats and stuff, but you know many people, unless they're ranked in the top ten in the world, I don't know many jobs with that. You know, struggle to earn a decent wage, and and for me, the struggle was definitely. Um, my career isn't going to last the whole lifetime. You know, I'm going to probably retire when I'm, I'm 35 and many banks don't understand that um, that sort of payment setup. But, you know, with the rise of living costs and stuff, you know, many young people are struggling to get onto that property ladder for, for different reasons. And the main one, which is what, you know, Nationwide Building Societies Commission has found out is that deposit, which is why I'm so happy to be supporting the the um, 95% mortgage rates, which means that you only need a 5% deposit. And yeah, this is, this is you know, the current climate of the world, but, you know, people need that extra help to, to get onto that property ladder. How big have financial issues loomed in your life, Katerina, as you've taken the step to becoming the world-class athlete that you are? Surely somebody as good as you shouldn't have to worry about money when you're training, when you're focused on being the very best you can be and, and making your country proud. What's been the reality for you in terms of managing the huge training regime you've had to do, the dedication that you've had to show to become who you are, alongside the realities of making your way in life financially as well and paying your bills? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's hard for everyone. I feel like COVID definitely struck a chord with, with people where, you know, I had a year out where by my main goal for that year was the Olympic Games, which got, you know, postponed or, or cancelled. And mm. it, it's it's tough where I, what am I going to do then? Am I, I can't work from home. Um, so it, 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 it struck a chord with everyone. And I think it's just about money management and, and making sure that, you know, you are spending on the right things and, and yeah, just looking ahead and, and planning for the future. And I think that this, what we're talking about today, which is nationwide and um, building society's um, new scheme of um, 95% mortgages um, is really going to help people get on that property ladder. As I say, you're, you're proudly born in Liverpool up there in the northwest. Obviously, homes are cheaper in some parts of the UK than others. Do you sense that your generation is going to be less attracted to moving to the more expensive parts of the UK, to London and the South East? Do you see from your cohort more people um, living in places, trying to buy homes, trying to make their lives in parts of the country where homes are cheaper? Yeah, no, it's better. I think uh, anyone from Liverpool... Um, 
don't, don't want to move away from Liverpool. I think I'm always going to be a home bird in that respect. And <laughs> fortunately for me, you know, I've got <laughs> I've got a, a, a better way of living as opposed to, you know, people who, you know, want to live in smaller places in London and, and share. I think that it's definitely a cheaper property. It's cheaper to buy properties up north. Um, so I'm lucky in that respect. And I've found in the last couple of months that prices in Liverpool are actually going up quite um, significantly because people realise that they can move away from London and they can work from home and, and they don't necessarily need to be in a major city to, to do their work. So um, it's it's good and and it's bad for sure, but um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be born and, and raised in Liverpool. And finally, Katrina, your generation is less likely than your parents' generation to own your own home. Your generation's spending more on rent than any generation since the 1930s. The UK as a whole now has a lower level of home ownership than the European Union average. So maybe we're not the nation of homeowners that we used to be. What would you say to ministers who maybe think your generation aren't bothered about whether or not they own a home? What does home ownership mean to you in terms of security and fulfilling other aspects of your life's uh, goals in the way that you've managed to fulfil so many of your athletic goals as well. Yeah, for sure. It was it was a huge part of, of what I wanted to achieve. Um, the minute I started getting money, that's what I wanted to, to put it into um, because I know it's such a huge life milestone and and I think that young people should be given the opportunity to be able to get the onto the property ladder like our parents, like our grandparents were. And it's um, it's a huge thing to just ground and centre a person and and know that, you know, whatever happens, they've got this little bit of land and, you know, it's sort of like a safe space. So I think that it's, it's very important for young people and for, for mental health as well. Katrina Johnson-Thompson, if I may say so, beautifully said, you're a Team GB athletics legend, and I think you could emerge as a big advocate for home ownership for your generation too. All the best to you and the rest of the British team at those Athletics World Championships in Eugene, Oregon in July. Katrina Johnson-Thompson, thanks so much for joining me here on The Money. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.